Technology and psychiatry of the last 60 years can actually claim that we can make miserable people less miserable. And I think that's terrific. I'm proud of it. Um, but what was not good, the consequences of that, were three things. The first was moral, that psychologists and psychiatrists became victimologists, pathologizers, that our view of human nature was that if you were in trouble, bricks fell on you. And we forgot that people made choices and decisions. We forgot responsibility. That was the first cost. The second cost was that we forgot about you people. We forgot about improving normal lives. We forgot about a mission to make uh, relatively untroubled people happier, more fulfilled, more productive. And genius, high talent, became a dirty word. No one works on that. And the third problem about the disease model is in our rush to do something about people in trouble, in our rush to do something about repairing damage, we never occurred to us to develop interventions to make people happier, positive interventions. So that was not good. And so that's what led uh, uh, people like Nancy Etkoff, Dan Gilbert, Mike Chicksent, my, Mihai, and myself to work in something I call positive psychology, which has three aims. The first is that psychology should be just as concerned with human strength as it is with weakness. It should be uh, just as concerned with building strength as with repairing damage. It should be interested in the best things in life. And it should be just as concerned with making the lives of normal people fulfilling and with genius, with nurturing high talent. So uh, in the last 10 years and the hope for the future, We've seen the beginnings of a science of positive psychology, a science of what makes life worth living. It turns out that we can measure different forms of happiness. And uh, any of you for free can go to that website and take the entire panoply of tests of happiness. You can ask,